Hi everyone, and welcome to my first CNC milling project. I really like CNC milling. It's just fantastic to see a piece of wood turn into something useful. Follow me along as I struggle with things like feeds and speeds while making something useful. I have a lot of these collets and end mills here and I want to make a holder for them. To easily access them all without having to search for them. Also stay tuned for the end of the video where I will show you what not to do with your end mills. So let's get started. First I took some measurements of the piece of wood I will be using for this project and modeled up a box in Fusion 360. On the top I started a sketch to lay out the holes for the collets and the corresponding bit sizes. If you like to know more about this process leave a comment below or check out the NYC CNC YouTube channel. They do a great job of explaining a lot about CNC milling and CAD modeling. The next step is converting the model from CAD to CAM. Here you need to create a setup. This says what your stock material is and where the origin point is that is used later in the controller software. Now it's nearly time for the fun part. First the CNC needs to be zeroed or the origin point needs to be set so that the CNC software knows where the stock origin is. To do this I used a piece of paper to feel when the cutter starts to grab onto it. Finally, time to start cutting. These are the feeds and speeds I use here, but I would recommend above 3800 mm per minute for the feed speed. This gives a chip of about 0.1 mm instead of a lot of dust like I have now. I find it really fascinating to see a CNC machine work and even more in real life than here on this video. I held this piece of wood down with screws through the bottom plate and just into the wood. The plate is just held down with some clamps. I don't have any real tabletop for my CNC but that will come soon. The way I mounted the wood here allows me to go all around the part so that I can also clean up the edges. Then it's moving on to making the holes. Here the feeds and speeds are also really slow. I would really recommend higher feeds and speeds. The bit here used is a 5mm 4 flute end mill. It's actually better suited for harder materials but it worked fine here as well. The holes for the collets are made in two steps. The first step is a roughing pass using a 2D adaptive. Then I used a bore to clean up the edges and get the desired diameter. I chamfered the top edge with a modified broken drill bit. It worked but the settings for this bit were a bit deep. Good that wood is a forgiving material. The other holes were made with a bore milling action. Up to 7mm holes were made with a 4mm end mill and the bigger holes starting from 8mm to 13mm were made with a 8mm end mill. So the last part is to oil the collet holder and I'm using some linseed oil mixed with a little bit of uh, turpentine.
So this is what the collet and end mill holder looks like when in use. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hit subscribe if you're new here and feel free to leave a comment or a suggestion down below. Stay tuned for what not to do with your end mills and see you next time. These are some of the end mills that I broke. I will explain a bit what I did with every with each of them. I will start with uh, this one. It was also the first one I broke. I believe it was the first one I broke. And I needed to mill a deep pocket with this one. So it was sticking out too far and so the radial forces were a bit too big and it was always moving around like this. So at a certain point it just snapped off. With this one I was milling aluminum at a too slow speed and the the aluminum gripped the bit and it just tore off. With this bit I dove too fast in a, a PCB. I was going too fast and the cutter just broke off. I used these clamps and I can position them at the side of the wood. Stick them a bit in there. This is quite sharp. Stick them a bit in there and then use a screw in this hole and screw them down and they will uh, bite into the side of the wood and then they will hold really well. And I had done this and this mill, I, I was doing an action with it uh, on top of it, but I also did a contour with it. So on first pass, it came here and it took off like a really small uh, layer of steel. And then it came around the next time and I think it's one or one and a half millimeter deeper and it just dug into this piece of steel. The, the hold down force on this steel was not strong enough to overcome the forces put on this by the CNC mill. So it came loose and then it started to rattle around and it just, yeah, it, it wrecked this mill. And then for the last one, this is a one millimeter end mill and I ro already broke three of them. Um, the first one I broke it's when it's sitting in a collet upside down and you try to loosen the nut on the side of the collet with a big wrench when it comes loose you just jump off the nut and just hit the end mill to prevent this now what I do is the two wrenches I, I keep them together like this and then I put my hand around it and move them towards each other by using this force instead of the force of my arms, which is uh, more smooth.